Hey guys, it's Carrie and Parker from Red Curtain Addict, and tonight we are at a special book release of Dr. Sylvia Earle's new book called National Geographic Ocean, A Global Odyssey. Tonight's event is held by the Aquarium of the Bay. So normally you guys see Red Curtain Addict covering red carpet galas, artist interviews, and concerts. But tonight, we're shaking things up a little bit, and we're not here to learn just about the music of the land, but actually to learn about the music of the ocean. Dr. Sylvia Earle covers all of this in her book, along with her explorations that she's learned of how the ocean impacts us daily and how we can impact the ocean positively. We're gonna hang out with a special guest, hear more about the book from Dr. Sylvia Earle, but before we do, I wanna show you a special clip about this new work. Turn it down. Did you know that about 90% of the goods marketed globally are transported by massive cargo ships? All that ocean-going traffic, together with other noisemakers such as offshore drilling and powerboats, significantly alters the underwater soundscape, making it difficult for sea creatures such as whales, dolphins, and even fish to communicate. Discover more about the ocean's natural music makers and how we can keep them singing along with other challenges and discoveries about life below the waves in my new book, National Geographic Ocean, A Global Odyssey. Hey guys, I am here with George Jacob, the CEO of Aquarium of the Bay. George, we're so excited you invited Red Curtain Addict here to celebrate tonight. We cannot wait to see what Dr. Sylvia Earle has released in this new book. And, and we wanted to ask you, what is, how is the Aquarium of the Bay involved in this book? So Sylvia has been our advisor for many years and uh, we're happy to host the um, signing of this fantastic book dedicated to oceans. And that's, that's our engagement. I mean, that's, we wanted to, um, pay tribute to her contributions um, to ocean conservation and, and awareness and action, and in particular, Hope Spots. And that's the reason why we thought that this would be appropriate to hold it here at the um, Bay Model, which was built by the United States Army Corps of Engineers in 1957, to look at the spills at the San Francisco Bay. That's incredible. You know, she has done so many great things in her career, and we love that you guys are teaming up because the Hope Spots are such a great way to save the ocean. So we, we, we celebrate that with you. So let me ask you another question. I'm sure you've had a sneak peek at the book before it was released. So tell, give us some insight, information, maybe not too much, so people still want to pick up a copy, but what's some things you can highlight that maybe an audience would like to know? I think the first thing is that the book has incredible, visually vibrant uh, imagery of the oceans. But the underlying thread is the seriousness of conserving what we have, which is fragile. And uh, far too many people have taken the oceans for granted. And I think that message comes out strong and clear that this is something which is fragile, it needs to be protected, and it needs to be nourished. And it's, uh, you know, there's only one ocean that connects us all. Isn't that true? There's one ocean that connects us all. So make sure you guys check out this book. It's doing more than just a great read and something to put on your coffee table. It's literally helping change the world. So thank you so much, George. Thank you for inviting us tonight. We are here with Lieutenant Colonel Arnett. This is such an amazing facility. It was so much fun to walk around with you and see this amazing model about it here in Sausalito. Can you tell us a little bit more about that that people may not be familiar with? Yeah, absolutely. So th this, I think, is a real treasure of what we have within the Corps of Engineers. Uh, it, this facility was originally uh, associated with some of the, the Liberty Ship building, as I understand it, um, but was built in 1957 uh, and had uh, scientific purpose and engineering purpose for us in the Corps of Engineers. So that hydrologic model that's there was used to actually model uh, the motions of the tide within the bay. There were no supercomputers in the day and so you made this great big physical model. I mean, talk about big. How big is it? Oh, boy, you got me on the spot there. I, you know, it's substantial. It's huge. Let's put it that way. Someone was telling me too, it's about two football fields large. So I mean, it's it's really big. Yeah, it, it really is. And, and to really capture the features, uh, it, it had to be. 
It had a progression over its life. It was modified to be able to include the title action associated with things. It's really neat what it's transitioned into now, uh, paired with uh, the, the sponsors that work with us here, an opportunity to come see this and, and learn about it. It's truly one of its kind, and it's really neat to see all of this different structure. So tell us, you know, tonight is all about celebrating Dr. Sylvia Earle's new book. So tell us about the connection that you guys have with this new work. Our closest connection is the Bay Ecotarium. It has been a really great partnership. It's helped this facility be uh, significantly improved. It's helped us outreach to the community. And, uh, and in turn, um, you know, I think it, it provides a lot of great access uh, for the Bay Ecotarium uh, group. It is a, the perfect place to have the book release. And thank you for having us. I'm really looking forward to this event and it was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. It was my pleasure. I have to tell you, I'm so excited to be here with Ms. Dr. Sylvia Earle, who is a, an amazing woman, an oceanographer, an author, and so many other things. Um, and, and honestly, it's an honor to meet you. I'm humbled by this. And I have to ask, this book is a great accomplishment. We can't wait to learn more about what's in this book. But what about this book to you is resonating differently with your heart than all the other amazing books you've written? <laughs> well, this was a team effort. A lot of people put a lot of their heart and soul into trying to tell the story of the ocean, including the magnificent photographs that stand alone. And, you know, they say a picture's worth a thousand words. I think that's true, but an experience that I hope this book will inspire to go out and see for yourself, gotta be worth at least a thousand pictures. I love it. And you know what? I'm a huge fan of everything National Geographic and Discovery Channel. I'm a big animal buff. And I have to say, one thing about this book that I think caught my eye is the simple fact that it's talking about the melodies of the ocean. And there's a piece in there about how the music of the ocean and how animals communicate that is so, so endearing. It's amazing. And so to me, I want to learn a little bit more about that. Can you explain how these animals communicate? And I guess some of the, the sounds that man kind of made that is disrupting this? Right. Sort of drowning out the music, if you will. But we've known for quite a while that marine mammals make sounds. Some seals have the most melodious sound that we understand birds <laughs> sing and, and have really beautiful sounds, but so do marine mammals. Whales, all of them communicate using their vocal skills, but so do fish and so do many crustaceans. And it should not be surprising. Sound travels in the ocean over long distances. And we, we perceive the world largely with our visual senses. And of course, that's part of the action in the ocean as well, but sound travels much further. We know about being able to see with sonar to visualize, bats do it. Dolphins do it. Some, only the sperm whales and orcas are able to, to do it. The toothed whales. The baleen whales, such as the one behind us here, yeah. the humpbacks and blue whales, also vocalize. They don't use sonar, but they have this big, deep, booming voices that carry over hundreds of miles through water. It's incredible, and, and, and it's amazing to think that they do communicate under the ocean like that, and, and that um, there's a lot of things that we're doing as, as a species, if you will, that's impacting their way to communicate. And I think that's why we're here at Red Kornak, because we want to understand this more and see what we can do to help. And I think, I think the, the last question I have for you in this, in this short time we get to be together is, what can we do as a general people to, to help? Right, I'm a I'm a, a lover of the animals. Um, is you know, there's so many things I think we can do, but like, what's the first step that we can take and our audience can take to actually make change? Because we're here. I think we want to do it. We just don't know what to do yet. Well, the knowledge that is out there today, that is, you know, we've learned more during my lifetime than during all preceding history. And I said when we when I finish this book, we'll have to start over to do the next one because. We're learning so much so fast, this one will soon be out of date. But on the other hand, we tried to get by looking at who knows what right now. 
and get the experts to speak for themselves about not only what we now know, but to project forward what, what's happening and for people to look in the mirror and ask yourself, who are you? Nobody can tell you what you can do better than you yourself, that person who looks back at you, to know what have you got? Do you have a way with kids? Do you have a way with numbers? Do you have a way with, with art or music? Use that special thing that you are to address some piece of this, the, the problems we now face. We kind of know what the problems are, and we know that we have the best opportunity that we'll ever have to move from decline to recovery. And the personal choices you make about what to eat, what to wear, what do you do with your trash? See if you can generate less. Your life, everyday decisions, stacked up next to all the other people who are around, really do make the difference that we're now experiencing. I love that. And you know what? You couldn't have said it better. It starts with you. It starts with me. It starts with us. And I think together we can change the world and, and get back to a point of recovery. So I found this amazing brand on Etsy called Ocean Kind Hawaii that takes all of the plastic and up cycles it to earrings and actually some of the proceeds from these earrings go to help clean up the coastlines of Hawaii and throughout our country. So really today all we're learning about is how can we do our part? How do we shop? What do we wear? How do we consume? What do we recycle? So I think anytime you shop on things like Etsy or online, you're doing your part. Just in that is going to make a huge difference. So make sure to check out this awesome brand on Etsy.